you mentioned you're you kind of going from MIT in a top business school um, and getting into consulting. I mean, that was your stint at McKinsey, right? Is is that is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I worked at McKinsey okay. before going to grad school. Okay. And that started senior year of college. I just wanted to desperately break into these prestigious career tracks. Sure. If anyone's going to like a top school, um, my school, University of Connecticut, is not seen as like one of these top schools. But um, I became aware of like all these tracks that companies hire from schools like Harvard, all these liberal arts schools, um, mm -hmm. even some of the big public schools like Virginia, Michigan, Georgia Tech, um, consulting firms, investment banks, uh, private equity, big tech firms at the time. Um, as soon as I found out about that, like having practiced some of my hoop jumping skills, I was like, I want that. <laughs> That's what I want. I want to be successful. I want to work with the smartest people. Um, and I just kept trying to break in. I got rejected from over a hundred companies my senior year of college. And then I worked for GE, who was a company that recruited at my school, was utterly bored, like, there was nothing going on at GE. I was doing my job in under 10 hours a week. And just like, I couldn't buy into all the like performance people were doing to like try and be good employees and move ahead. I was like, there's no way I'm spending my time. So I kept applying to consulting firms, got rejected from probably over a hundred firms again. Wow. But McKinsey uh, was intrigued by my experience at GE and some of my background in manufacturing and gave me a shot. Uh, and ended up landing a firm landing a job at like what's seen as the top consulting firm so as soon as i step into that place suddenly like the perception of who i was changed which was right. wild because nothing had really changed um but that really opened up a lot of doors in terms of like what the potentials were. And then suddenly I was in this new paradigm of like, you have all these options. How do you keep that going and keep going on this successful career person narrative? And then uh, you basically have taken all that and we'll obviously get into the book, but then you also have uh, created some courses. So uh, strategy you, um, and I looked into the deep diving and stuff. And so basically learn strategy, consulting secrets. So you can talk strategy with the CEO and it's more, mostly a four week uh, course, basically around that. I, I saw some of the frameworks, but I mean, what, what can we kind of learn from strategy consulting or what maybe a too long didn't read kind of, you know, quick overview of what exactly is strategy consulting? So connecting this with my story, there's probably a bigger uh, theme here, which is that there were things I loved doing. I really liked consulting. I liked the work of like making sense of information and trying to structure it and communicate it in compelling and persuasive ways to get people to take action. I loved that process. Um, I hated doing it 60 hours a week for grumpy people. Um, <laughs> But I like doing it and I would teach others this. I would teach friends and then I volunteered teaching an undergrad consulting group. And it was something I loved doing and did on the side of my career path for years. And then when I left my job, um, I had done some experiments creating a resume online course and basically just created this course to give it away to people. And then just kept volunteering to teach people these skills. And then that course slowly over the past five years has been something that has taken over, has done better and better. Um, but it's essentially teaching the fundamental skills I learned in consulting, which is how do you make sense of information? How do you structure it? How do you create clear and compelling communication? Um, and then I've been experimenting with a lot of different ways of doing that. Virtual workshops, uh, online course, um, asynchronous learning and different things like that. Um, but yeah, the, the key thing there is I love teaching and helping people the entire way through. And as I progressed in my career, that was less valued. Most companies don't give a shit if you like help and coach and teach other people. They might say it in performance reviews, but in most of the kind of jobs I was in, you got to bring in clients and you got to execute. <laughs> and like, right. if you help other people along the way, great, but like, that's not, we're not going to reward or create a position for you around that. And that, that took me a long time to realize. Yeah. I, I can imagine that that was not, I don't want to go so far as soul sucking, but I guess it had some impact for sure on just your, 
you know, uh, mood, your drive, et cetera. And then that kind of leads us um, into kind of where you are, are, are now. I mean, I also saw on Twitter, I think now check me if I'm wrong, but uh, your courses are now like one of your biggest, you know, uh, money makers and like how you kind of persist and, and do things. So like, how, how have you seen it kind of change over the years? And maybe what's your biggest key learning from kind of, like you said, doing this kind of throw something at the wall and see what sticks to then now you kind of have this multimodal approach of all the good things that you had to then create a course, workshops, et cetera. Yeah. So I love creating stuff. <laughs> I like writing. <laughs> I like creating content. I like creating online courses. I like helping teach people stuff. So I've just consistently done that. My first thing I created an online course was in 2015. Um, and then I created another cohort based course, teaching people how to like make shifts and become freelancers and solopreneurs. That was 2018, 2019. I created the strategy course. Um, so 2015, 16, 17, 18, um, I probably made less than a hundred dollars yeah. from this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I, I just kept doing it because I thought it was fun and worth doing. Um, and then the consulting course that first year in 2019, I probably made like $15,000. So I was still doing a little freelancing, but also living abroad and my cost of living was low. Um, and I just kept tweaking it. And then 2020, it started taking off mostly because a lot of people were looking for online learning. And that's when I started investing more energy into it. Probably made like 40 grand from it. Um, I think this past year I generated like after costs, probably like 55. Um, so now it's like a base income um, that's able to support things. It still takes work and um, think like constant tweaking and I work with the students one on one. Uh, but yeah, it's become a really cool platform to, um, to just keep exploring, have free time to work in the creative projects and also use that as a way to keep experimenting and finding things I like doing.